Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Pola Negri looked like something from a storybook. She had jet black hair, pale skin that reporters compared to a camellia blossom, and a sensual mouth that, painted bright red, read as something deep and mournful on screen. She was Polish by birth and Hollywood's first foreign import. The Tsar of Russia once said she had the most kissable hands in the world. How Pola Negri lost her mind at Rudolf Valentino's funeral. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. To American audiences, she was exoticism manifest, an amalgamation of connotations that added up to different, not us. That exoticism was fiercely appealing. Five years before Negri came to Hollywood, it had made Theda Bara into a massive star, at least until the public figured out the creature who had been born of a woman and a serpent on the banks of the Nile was really just from Ohio. But Negri was the real deal. Her father may not have been a serpent, but he had been a rebel fighting the Russian army, and Negri had royal blood in her veins and a title, acquired through a doomed marriage to a Polish count, still lingering in front of her name. But Negri was more than an accumulation of skilful publicity. The girl could act, and her willingness to throw herself into her characters, to let the full spectrum of emotion wreak havoc with her body, was what first enamoured her to the American public. But that emotionality and Negri's willingness to exploit it soon became too much. By 1926 she was involved in a farcical relationship with Rudolf Valentino. When he suddenly died, she prostrated herself at the foot of his grave and arranged for a fake note from the doctor to declare that his last thoughts had been of her. It could have made for a very successful film, but played out in real life it became ridiculous, and Negri became a punchline. Today Negri's beauty seems otherworldly, untranslatable. But in the twenties those coal-lined eyes sent shivers down spines. She was one of the great stars of the silent film era, an actress whose personal story of hardships and successes, loves and tragedies is more compelling than most Hollywood dramas. Yet today she is largely overlooked, her name tarnished by myths and scandals. Taking a fresh look at her life and career, this video debunks the myths and gossip, presenting a candid portrait of one of the silent screen's most sensational leading ladies. The details of Negri's childhood are contradictory and somewhat murky. A fan magazine claimed she had the paradoxical distinction of being one of the most famous and yet least known of all stars. Everyone knew her name, but no one knew her story. Some claimed she was a courtesan, others thought she was an ordinary German shop girl named Pauline Schwarz. But Negri's mystery was part of her appeal. Her image was a blank slate onto which audience members could map their most exotic fantasies. She was born Barbara Apollonia Chalupiak. She was an only child and growing up lived an impoverished life. Her mother worked to maintain a small apartment in a Warsaw slum. Her early life was marked by the departure of her father, who was arrested in 1902 by the Russians and sent to Siberia. Her father never returned after being incarcerated for revolutionary activity. She resolved to not let her impoverished background prevent her from achieving her dreams. She decided early on in life that she would be a star. She subsequently moved with her mother to Warsaw, where she enrolled in the Imperial Academy of Ballet. After a period of financial hardship, Negri began a new chapter in her life, debuting in Tchaikovsky's epic Swan Lake in 1908, for which she gained critical praise. Polar worked her way up and gave a solo performance of the St. Leon ballet production Capellia, again achieving commercial success. After her recovery, she was accepted into the Imperial Academy of Dramatic Arts, where she landed the role of Anelia in Alexander Fredro's production of Maiden Vows at the small theatre in Warsaw. It was here that she used her stage name Pola Negri for the first time, which she adopted from her favourite Italian poet Ada Negri. Unfortunately, reviews for her first production were unfavourable, but she soon managed to land another role with the help of her mentor, 
Kazimierz Ulwitz in Rizard Odinsky's pantomime Summer Run at the Grand Theatre. The production was a hit and Polar began to set her sights on a career on the big screen at the humble age of 17. She turned to acting and worked under legendary directors Max Reinhardt and Ernst Lubitsch in Germany. For the film she made her debut two years later and already personified the type vamp which she would become famous. His films, Carmen, Madame du Barry, Summer Run, made her famous, and since Madame du Barry was a tremendous success in the US, where it was distributed under the title Passion, Negri was signed by Adolf Zukor for Paramount. She was the first German screen actress to make the move to the United States, a place she claimed to have dreamed about all her life. It is like heaven to which people go for eternal happiness. Always people return rich or send money back. When Charlie Chaplin spoke of his time in Europe, he talked to the New York press about a new film talent. He was referring to Pola Negri. Intrigued, Mr. Jesse L. Lasky, head of the famous Players Agency, known today as Paramount Pictures, sent her an invitation to Hollywood. The door is quickly opened for international success and she soon becomes the first European star to move to Hollywood. She became one of Poland's leading actresses as well as a Hollywood star. She was incredibly beautiful with piercing green eyes, milky white skin and jet black hair, a combination that enthralled men and women alike. There Negri makes her way to the top and achieves superstar status becoming a fan favourite through the mix of her beauty, acting talent and diva personality. She is the original femme fatale and a role model for women all over the world. Negri steals the hearts not only of the audience but also of the greatest Hollywood actors of her time. She preceded Lou Bitch to Hollywood where she quickly became a fan favourite thanks to her beauty, talent and diva personality. Known for her alluring sexuality and biting artistic edge, she starred in more than 60 films and defined the image of the cinematic femme fatale. America immediately fell madly in love with the young foreign actress. Her smoky eyes and sultry beauty made her irresistible to fans of the silent screen, and it was Polar who popularised red toenail polish, fur boots and turbans, leaving her permanent stamp on American fashion. For the first time in 1922, Polar Negri walked the streets of Hollywood home to the biggest stars of the day. It was rumoured that she received a personal blessing from Sarah Bernhardt herself to become the former superstar's successor, yet her career did not immediately take off. To make the situation worse, a rivalry grew between Polar and film star Gloria Swanson, who was known as the Queen of Paramount. Paramount's management had let go of Swanson in order to take a chance on Polar. She starred in Belladonna, playing a ruthless woman who stops at nothing and who finally meets her fate in the form of a vicious panther. But Negri moved on, more and more eschewing the exotic clichés of her earlier roles. Now she got praise from US critics for her subtle humour and European sophistication, and Negri was subsequently cast as the gallant lady who brings audiences to tears in sentimental scenes. One of her first pictures was Rosita, which was a commercial failure and did much to tarnish the director's image. However, with their reputations on the line, Ernst and Polar fought back, and in 1924 the film Forbidden Paradise brought them the success they were waiting for. Several other films followed, and in 1924 Negri enjoyed her biggest success in Hollywood with Forbidden Paradise by Lubitsch, while Hotel Imperial by Moritz Stiller arguably marked the best performance in an American feature. She continued to play women coming from a foreign background, whether it was the Italian aristocrat in A Woman on the World or the French farmer's wife in Barbed Wire. Her fame, however, though great, was short-lived in Hollywood. The American public were unreceptive to Polar. The media only speculated on the film star's supposed scandals and inappropriate behaviour. Americans flocked to see Polar Negri films, but perhaps even more so to the newsstands to read the latest scoop on her dramatic personal life. She was a master of publicity, making it difficult to determine how much of her media portrayed private life was true and how much was carefully orchestrated to boost her celebrity persona or publicise an upcoming film. Some of the stories that most captured morning readers were about her supposed feud with actress Gloria Swanson for top billing on screen and off. 
news centred around their lavish lifestyles, out their personalities, and penchant for marrying minor royalty. Her rivalry with acclaimed actress Marlena Dietrich was another story that became the talk of the town. Grand parties, fantastic outfits, rumours of torrid love affairs. She offered it all, and readers loved every word of it. Polar gained a reputation as a seductive icon after a string of romances with Rod LaRocque, Charlie Chaplin, who denied involvement, and Rudolph Valentino, who was her lover to the day he died. Yet Negri's private life made more headlines than her films, especially when a planned wedding between her and Charlie Chaplin made the news in 1922. They never married and their relationship ended in a public exchange of profanities. She made the headlines with her numerous affairs. Equally spectacular was her breakdown at the funeral of Rudolf Valentino, who allegedly was her lover and husband-to-be. Rudolf Valentino was an Italian actor who thrived in 1920s Hollywood and he died unexpectedly at age 31. In the wake of his death, fans lined the streets in mourning, and it is said that Negri sent more than 1,000 red and white roses spelling out Pola to be placed near his coffin. At his funeral, which was attended by thousands, actress Pola Negri put on quite the show. After loudly announcing that she was Valentino's secret fiancée, Pola and Valentino were openly living together when he died. Pola's mourning of his death was interpreted by many as being ostentatious. The fine lines of Pola's public and personal life began to blur, and her fans slowly turned on her during this period of mourning. Pola married again only seven months after Valentino's death, further leading some to question her grief, accusing her of overacting for publicity while others defended her, claiming she never loved anyone other than Valentino. Nonetheless, her marriage after Valentino's death took its toll on her career and her public image. When her contract ended in 1928, Negri's popularity had already faded due to numerous scandals, while her Polish accent proved to be a problem with the coming of sound cinema. She returned to Europe and first worked in England and France, before she had her real comeback in Germany, with Willy Faust's Mazurka. She is frequently cast as the devoted mother and wife, for instance in Tango Noturno and Moscow Shanghai. While in Germany she came to the attention of Hitler, who tried to convince her to make propaganda films for the Third Reich. She declined. Rumours of an affair with Hitler haunted her while she stayed in Europe, but she denied it and won a lawsuit against a French magazine who had published the story. Between 1927 and her death, she made a mere 15 films, in stark contrast to the 20 films that made her a star during her golden years at Paramount. Despite one of her movies being a huge hit in 1943, she was not offered another part in a movie until 1964. Retiring to Texas, she passed away from severe pneumonia in 1987. Although her career was comparatively short, she remains a legend of the silver screen, larger than life thanks to her enduring personality and talent. Always surrounding herself with luxury, she blazes the trail for the modern celebrity lifestyle. The political turmoil of the early 20th century contributes to her frequent moves between the United States and Europe, moves that enrich her acting style and make her an international symbol of success. Always the queen of social circles, Negri embraces the changing times with ease and grace. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Pola Negri? At the height of her fame, Negri often portrayed exotic and mysterious temptresses.